everyone. I'm Mariah. And today we are interviewing one of our founding members, actually, of the Addicted to ROI Inner Circle. May 4th is actually our three-year anniversary of Inner Circle, so pretty exciting. Without further ado, let's welcome Andrew Nutt. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so happy to have you here. And I'm, I'm anxious to learn all about you and uh, Stay Flourish and everything that you've got going on. But let's start at the beginning. So how did you get started in real estate? I got started in real estate um, kind of in a, a roundabout way. Um, I, I'm a fourth generation carpenter. Um, my gra grandpa, you know, cut the trees down on the building sites and, and milled his own lumber and, and quarried stone for fireplaces and foundations. And, um, I took that knowledge and, uh, you know, worked in the family business growing up, um, and wanted to, wanted to help people. And so in a, in a, it's just a whole interesting story in it, in and of itself. Um, I ended up getting a master's degree in, in philosophy and studied relational onto <laughs> relational ontology, um, how people flourish in relationship and in connection. And then took that and came out to the Seattle area and got a master's in psychoanalysis. And um, through that whole journey, realized that I wanted to help people um, experience beautiful spaces and build beautiful spaces and started a construction company um, based on the idea that beauty changes people, that you cannot encounter beauty and remain the same, that like waking up in a beautiful home changes the, the trajectory of your day and the trajectory of your relationships and allows you to be more of who you were meant to be rather than waking up in a, you know, I don't know, like some of the units uh, that I've worked on in, in the past, you know, basement little like cramped um, places. And so just that, that idea of beauty uh, has really captured my heart and, um, and not just beauty in the physical structures, but in the way that we do things. And, and I think a lot of that's real estate investing, right? We're like, how do we live a beautiful life? We want to have passive income so that we can invest in our families and our friends and the things that um, bring, bring us joy. Wow. Wow. This is, this is deep and I love it. I'm here for it. Um, you know, you're, you're right. And it, a lot of, we are influenced, right. Mentally and emotionally by our surroundings. And I know, um, when I was young, we helped my, I helped my parents, you know, build our house and we built it kind of from the ground up, cleared trees and all, and, um, living in that kind of rehab space, which a lot of our investors do, you know, they're, they're buying, houses and, and burying them and, you know, kind of fixing them up while living in those spaces. And it can be, it can be pretty hard uh, mentally and emotionally to like live in, in that while there's so much construction mm -hmm. and everything going on. Um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there is um, someday I, I want to write a book or, you know, do, do some sort of series of talks on, um, psychoanalysis and design and how, uh, even things like attachment theory, um, are incorporated in our, our designs. There was a psychologist, John Bowlby, um, and he wanted to understand how mammals attach. And so he took baby monkeys and he, um, did an experiment where he had a wire monkey set up with a, a bottle and then a cloth monkey set up um, that, that had like a um, cloth on it. And he stressed the baby monkeys. He played like a distressing sound. And they would run to the cloth monkey and not the wire monkey. And, and that's contrary to evolution because evolution would say you would, in, in times of stress, you go toward food. You, you would go towards your, your Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right. And what he, found, what he found was that the... the comfort was so important and so how do we build build spaces whether they're airbnbs or their homes that ground us that give us that sense of comfort that sense of security which is the first part of attachment safety security 
and then attunement, which is connectivity, which means that how do you have a floor plan where people can connect in the, the open spaces of kitchens and dining rooms. Right. Yeah. yeah. What's the flow of it, right? Kind of uh, pulling in the, the feng shui elements of everything as well, I bet. So did, did you, have you studied a lot of actual like design and interior design and colors and all kinds of things like that as well? I, I have a little bit, but um, I just love to, I love to make things happen. <laughs> I, I, uh, I love the, the theory and I love building. Um, and so I've got designers on my team, both for the Airbnb space and for construction that help to nail down the specific details um, of those things. And, um, but I, I like to walk into a, a place, whether it's a, you know, a rental um, or, you know, a commercial building and look at it and say like, okay, I can envision how could this work? How could this be, uh, you know, how can we maximize space? How can we add a unit? Um, you know, the opportunities to, to upgrade um, spaces. Yeah. The vision, right? The vision is so important. Um, I know in, in investing a lot of times we're going into spaces and we're assessing them to figure out, you know, can we add a bedroom? You know, can we uh, change things around? Yeah. And, and, and make people want to live here. Right. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. I love it. So tell me a little bit about your like personal investing journey. Um, where are you with that? Yeah, great question. Um, so as I was in grad school, I started a construction company. And then through that construction company, I realized I was making real estate investors a lot of money and wanted to get in on the game rather than just kind of facilitating other, other folks. Right. And <clears throat> that led me to... Um, to start to buy rentals. And I invest um, in the Midwest and invest here in, in Seattle, where I live, um, and have learned a lot. Um, part of the way through my journey, I, I had a short-term rental that was being managed by a large um, management company. And I knew that they weren't doing a great job, that they weren't really dialed in on what needed to happen. Sure. So I hear that a lot. I, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up firing them and built a team in house that um, we trained up and have on staff W2 cleaners. So there's no uh, worry about cleaners not showing up and switched most of my portfolio over into short term rentals. I still have some long term but most of my, my units are in short term. And I, you know, I saw a, a dramatic increase in revenue um, based on that and perfected those systems, perfected those processes and continued to train up um, our, our staff and have now been, you know, managing other people's units. Um, other investors have come to me and, and said, Hey, can you manage what we have going on? Can you, can you make us more money and, um, off of our long-term rentals by making them short-term? And it's been a really fun, it's been a really fun process. All right. So what markets do you have short-term rentals in? Um, Seattle and Minnesota, Minnesota, the larger, larger Seattle area. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So do you, do you have, um, you kind of buy multiples in one area that way you can kind of use these employees that you've built this team. Right. So you, you buy like a more than one in one area, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Economies of scale is a really important factor. Um, and that also goes with uh, multifamily. If you can find a uh, fourplex and turn it into an Airbnb, um, that's also a really great way to uh, create the, the economies of scale. If you, for example, if you want to put in an, an EV charger, if you have four units, now you get to market an EV charger across all four units, not just a single, uh, a single home. And cleaning supplies, um, cleaning personnel, most of the cleanings are going to happen on a, on a uh, Monday, um, a Sunday or a Monday. And so, being able to have cleaners go to one spot 
and double up on units um, is really, really, really helpful for, for profit bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you offer this management uh, for others as well that want to buy in, in these specific, these two areas or other places? Yeah, we, um, we can manage anywhere in the United States. Um, we have boots on the ground um, staff, you know, here in, in Seattle and then in Minnesota. Um, but we can manage, um, you know, anywhere and partner with, with cleaning companies and, and uh, handymen and things like that um, to, to help people. And we, we offer also here in the Puget Sound area, a kind of a, a more of a global uh, picture also. So if someone is like, Hey, I, I, I don't know what to do for lending, or I don't know what type of property to get, we can help them on that journey from start to finish, walk alongside them and help to identify, Hey, here's a great property. It's distressed, but it's in the right location. Let's, let's burn this property. But at the end of it, we're going to turn it into an Airbnb and we can, we, I've got the lenders and the contacts to help with the with the the uh, debt stack and figuring out all the ways to fund the project and then the exit and the management afterwards so we kind of help people walk the full journey uh of investment i love that there's so many investors that you know seek that out and you're basically like a one-stop shop for it that's that's really amazing that you built you know such a encompassing team, you know, a team that's going to handle kind of all aspects of it and having your, of course, your background in construction. So with your uh, short term rentals that you bought, is that kind of your process that you would buy? Um, you bought properties that kind of needed construction upgrades and, and you really put like a lot of work into them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always looking to uh, you know, create value. I think that's always, you know, wherever I'm at. Um, I, I did a deal um, where I bought, I bought a place for 285. I put about 150,000 in on it. And at the end, it appraised for 877. Um, and did a, did a Burr refinance on it. And I think we pulled out I don't know, 200 or 250,000 or something um, tax-free cash out of that deal. That's impressive. And yeah. Yeah. That was a, a fun project. Um, and then we took, took that and some of that money uh, right now is in a development project in Seattle where I'm building a uh, two houses on, on one lot um, kind of getting into some of the nitty gritty value add opportunities within zoning and within um, the changing legislation. Um, there was an existing house on a lot and it was in the back of the lot. And so we're going to redesignate that, that home as an accessory dwelling unit. And we're going to build uh, a single family, a 3000 square foot single family residence on the front and another attached unit, thousand square foot attached so we'll have two new houses on free land. So the land is free to us and we'll put it under a condo agreement and be able to sell off all three of them independently and, um, you know, reap the, the profit. The, the idea is potentially to keep the single family home uh, because it's designed and built right now as a 16 person Airbnb. So a large occupancy Airbnb and, um, it's in Northgate near the, near the hospital and the transit centers and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so that's a really great way to create wealth. Um, anytime you can build in the, in the Puget Sound area or in any, you know, um, high value market, you know, construction costs are somewhere around, you know, 250 to $300 a square foot. And the exit value, you know, uh, especially on, accessory dwelling units depending on your area but it's 700 800 dollars a square foot and so the delta on that is is a massive opportunity to to build wealth yeah wow uh, those <laughs> some amazing projects i love it that's wow it's very impressive 
Thanks. Thanks. It's been really fun. And I definitely couldn't do it without my team. Um, we've got some just phenomenal people that we get to work with and, and just thankful, yeah. thankful for well, it. Speaking of, I know, uh, was it earlier this week or last week? I know you put on a, a post right here in the Facebook group about, you know, any, anyone that has a short-term rental listing that they want some feedback on. And I, uh, I reached out, I got to talk to Griffin who is, you know, your partner. And uh, he took a look at my listing. He gave me some amazing tips and feedback on it and so much help. It was, it was, I was impressed that you guys uh, were able to just kind of post on there and, and uh, offer your services. And it was, he, he really helped me and gave me some new uh, like software and some things that I hadn't even heard of before to kind of check into. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, we, our main like, um, motto or our goal is to add value. Like we want to help the people around us and we, you know, if people want us to look at their, their unit, look at their listings, just, uh, you know, get on Facebook and DM me your, your unit and just some information and we can set up a call with, with Griff and, um, yeah, we just want to help people. Um, I know that I'm not where, I'm at right now in isolation. There have been people that have come along my path and my journey and have, have helped me. And I am super grateful for them and um, just want to build that uh, like um, kind of connective fabric where we all can, can succeed together. Um, I think about, <laughs> I think a lot of times I think about real estate investing as kind of like, we're all just a bunch of kids playing in a sandbox. Right. And we're just like, Hey, like, can, can I like borrow your shovel? Okay, I'm borrow your shovel. I'll fill this thing up, and I'm gonna build this little like house over here, and then I build this road, and like we get to play together, you know, and having that sense of like childlike self forgetfulness of we get to do this, and um, we get to help each other out, and it being playful rather than really stressful. Yeah, networking and community is, you know, it's such a big key factor, really, in, in uh, su being successful and investing and having it, you know, be fun, really, like being able to be around other people that um, you can not only learn from, from, but you can grow side by side with. And um, I mean, that's, that's why we are building this uh, community, this inner circle. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you've gotten as far as being a member in that? Yeah. Great question. Um, the, just the encouragement and the networking, um, just being around other, other people who are on the same journey and wrestling with the same things and being able to laugh at, you know, the crazy situations that come up as an investor. <laughs> there are plenty. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yep. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I remember, Yeah crawling around under a trailer house to try to check if the, if the utilities worked uh, because I couldn't go inside. I couldn't go inside the trailer house because it was um, a, a off market, um, like a, a, a bank repo sale. Well, there was meth, meth addicts, meth heads living in the trailer above me that didn't know I was crawling under the trailer to check the utilities to see if this was a good, a good buy or not. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the things we do for real estate. Yeah, yeah, but it's just been really fun to be with a group of people um, with with the inner circle who gets get that who I feel at home with. I feel like I don't have to explain so many things with that they they understand me and and also that I can pick up the phone and I can call if I have questions. Um, so so many of the people I've I've relied on and and have, have partnered with and it's and, and our dear friends now because of um, the group. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. We're a sounding board and cheerleaders and teachers and all of, all of the things. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty awesome. I love our little community. Um, well, yeah. so what are your goals now? What are your, you know, personal goals? <clears throat> um, yeah. Great question. Um, I would like to continue to grow the Airbnb management company and continue to help more and more investors on that front and um, 
continue to invest in, in real estate. Um, I have a um, syndication that I'd like to, it, it's, it's formed, but um, hasn't uh, acquired anything. And I'd like to um, start uh, moving on that um, project. Um, the Seattle projects are definitely, those two houses that I'm building are definitely um, big on my radar here this, this next year. And um, I'm looking for people to partner with on that investment. You know, I'm, I'm open to conversations with people um, about that, that project. I, my goal is to help um, investors like who want to be passive, make a bunch of money, and then we can keep doing deals. Like, I don't want to just keep it all and be like, oh, this is just mine and I'm going to do this. And, but I'm like, hey, let's spread the wealth and let's bring in other people. And I want to help all of us be able to succeed together. And so I'm excited about that project and excited about more of those development projects that have really high margins. And, yeah. You know, just looking for people to partner with that, that want to do those types of projects. Yeah, I love that. More and more, you know, I, I'm around and hearing people wanting to partner with each other and not just kind of do things on their own. A lot of people, I think, are, are really looking for, um, you know, to, to build their, to grow really as an investor and build their portfolio, but um, but with others. And, uh, you know, everybody has different strengths. And, and I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool, actually, to, to watch that, especially inside our community, but, but watching people, um, you know, network with each other, and then become partners and, and really seeing what they can do, because a lot of times they're doing much bigger things than they could do by themselves. So and it sounds like, you know, this project that you've got going on is, is big, it's going to take a while. So yeah, I can't wait to see uh, the the process of it. Yeah, yeah, I like, yeah, I like what you said about the teamwork aspect. And um, yeah, I agree. Um, being able to do bigger projects and unique projects, you know, as a group, um, things like we're exploring options on building, um, you know, uh, Airbnb communities, um, A-frame communities, things like that. And those are, those are projects where we need a village. We need people who have a vision, have a vision that, that is similar to that, that want to join up and say, Hey, let's, let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that you would talk about like buying a, a chunk of land and then building a frames kind of somewhat close together and then having community features. So, you know, picnic areas or, or pool or kind of things like that. Play areas, yeah. activity areas. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. And being able to, again, maximize that idea of the economies of scale that if we can, you know, um, an Airbnb is optimized for the, the, the two, two person occupancy. Um, that's the majority of the, the travelers on that platform. VRBO tends to be larger, larger, um, groups or, or families and things, but, um, finding ways to create value and create beauty. And that's, that's the cool thing that these things don't have to be separate. You know, we don't have to be like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like anti-beauty in order to make money. That actually the reality is that when you build beautiful experiences and you build beautiful buildings, people love it and people are attracted to it. They're drawn to it and, and there's, there's money, there's profit there. And so doing things the right way and um, being thoughtful about uh, beauty and quality um, are, are actually a really great way to, to make, make good revenue. In the short term rental space, I, I am with you. I believe really it is about being unique. You know, what can this specific property bring that is inherently unique to it? Or what can you do to make it stand out from everything else? Um, there's so much competition at this point in most markets um, that really, you know, finding those, whether it's design elements or natural elements of that area, um, you know, finding those things and, and getting creative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, if we have many people watching that want to reach out to you and find out more about Stay Flourish, how do we find you? Yeah, um, thanks. 
um, Facebook, my, you know, Andrew Nutt on Facebook. Um, also, stayflourish.com. Um, jump on there and you can fill out some information at the bottom of the page and we can get connected that way. Um, those are great, great options. Um, also, would want to say to anybody who's a new real estate investor beginning their journey, um, I think there's, there's two things that dictate success uh, in real estate. Um, and that's knowledge and relationships. Um, so the first one, knowledge, uh, Foucault, uh, a French philosopher, he talked about um, knowledge as power. And I think that's such an important idea that, that your investing power is related to your knowledge, how much you know about your craft. Um, above our office door, we have this, this quote, um, and it says, luck is 50% opportunity and 50% preparation. Yeah. And under that, under, the, under that is written, so you control 50% of your luck because you control your preparation. You don't control your opportunities. So you can control 50% of your luck. And that's why the preparation and the knowledge portion is so important to be ready when the deal comes so that you know what your buy box is, you know what a good deal is and what a good deal isn't, and you can execute on those opportunities. Right. Um, and I think the second thing is relationships. Uh, your network is your net worth, as people say. Mm -hmm. And I think that not only just in financial sense, also, you know, the question is how, How's your net worth emotionally? How's your net worth spiritually? How's your net worth relationally? What are the other categories of life? And do you have a good net worth in those categories? And what are the people like that you spend your time with? And I think what's so cool about the inner circle um, is that there's such a group of people that can help each other. And there's people that know way more than I do about certain things. And I go to them and I'm like, hey, you guys know this, help me out here. And that networking is such a key portion, is such a key part of, of real estate success. So I'd say those are the two things for uh, beginners with real estate. If you focus on those two things, learning and, and relationships, I think those are the two things that will set your success. Absolutely. Yes. I can't agree with you more. And, uh, you know, I think there's so many times that us getting into real estate that, um, you know, a lot of times our, our personal families or, or personal, you know, close friends aren't really on board with it. So yeah. I think it's important to find these communities and, and network with people that, that are, you know, helping you and helping you learn and helping you, you know, um, support this, <laughs> this journey in real estate where, um, whereas, you know, we might not have that support, uh, in our normal kind of personal community. So it really, it really is, uh, about who you're spending your time with and, and who you're surrounding yourself with, right. That's going to help us grow and, and flourish. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, That's thank great. you so much, Andrew. This has been a pleasure and uh, such an enlightening experience. I, I love it. I love uh, I love your whole vision here. And um, I can't wait to see all of this grow and, and uh, you know, your personal investments as well and, and your business. I'm excited to watch all of it. And um, please get in touch with Andrew. You guys, thank you for watching this and enjoy. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Thanks.